Howdy folks, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. As you may know, if you watch our video work, we've been doing videos for about nine years. We have over 800 videos, and I've been in the trades a lot longer than 30 years. We won't go into how long, long enough to know how to do this stuff. Anyhow, a couple questions I've been getting a lot of response from. Uh, people say, gee, Kirk, we're doing a color coat, and as fast as we put the trowel full on, it dries, absorbs. And they said, should we use a weldcrete or a bonding agent? And I said, no, just hydrate the walls. I'm going to explain what that is. Another thing we get asked a lot about is finishes. This is a double finish. And what does that mean, a double finish? That means somebody applied the first coat. Then they floated it. See that ceiling? That's a sand finish. So somebody came here, they applied the first coat, and then they gave it a sand finish. Then they put a skip trial over it. So this is called a sand skip trial finish. Here's another tip, guys, because uh, all these questions that we receive over the years. If he can zoom in, Jay, um, the top one, notice that the grit or sand is a bit heavier. Now that's called 1620 right here. That's the heaviest sand they make uh, for finishing uh, plaster. Down here, this is 2030. That's a technical word for medium sand finish. Then they have uh, Santa Barbara or BMI's uh, marble coat and that's for like talcum powder finishes like um, smooth mission finish or hard steel trowel. Now let me explain to the folks who call me and say how come I, as soon as I put on my first trowel it absorbs in the wall. It's not hydrated. For example a brick. If you wet a brick it darkens but that's maintenance free. Look at the tile down here, if you could shoot. To, you wet the tile and they darken considerably. That's maintenance free. You never have to mess with that stuff. But if you're going to do a color coat over a brown coat, which is cementitious and it absorbs it a lot, how long would you think I would have to hit this wall right here? So I'm going to color coat this in five minutes. How long should I hydrate this wall? Hydrate it is a fancy word for wet the wall in order to do the color coat finish. The answer is about an hour. This finished coat, which is an eighth of an inch, has got to saturate, and the two coats under it has got to saturate. I want the paper wet. So if the paper's wet, now my, when I apply the, the coat, whether or not I'm using fine, medium, or heavy sand finish, it won't suck up and dry because that'll jack up the texture, it'll jack up the color. So I'll show you over here, guys, because we're actually doing a wall. All right, this, this work here was done but when the guys did this, they just, they trialed it on, which is not bad. Uh, but they didn't know that they had to do a float finish. They just applied it. And of course, use it, they, we've got to match this finish here. This is heavy sand uh, that's been floated. You bring out the aggregate and then the texture. So what I'm going to do here, guys, is I've been here, well, it's the end of the day now. It's about seven hours we've been doing all kind of stuff. Um, our job was fix some windows, fix some doors, and stuff like that. I've been hydrating this wall. I want this wall to absorb all the way to the paper, a solid inch. How long will that take? I've been doing this my sixth or seventh time doing this. Uh, and I do it so when you can see it absorb in, and when it starts, when it stops absorbing in, that's about ready, guys. Right here, we're a little too wet, but uh, nothing I can't handle since I just over wet it for this video. So let me show you guys something. All right, you take your color coat material, and by the way, guys, there's so many different color coat manufacturers from La Habra, BMI, Western, Omega, and what I have here is just a color coat material. See that stuff? Okay, anybody know what color this is? You gotta be pretty good to know that. <laughs> it's sandstone, X86. So. What we're doing is we apply it. And remember guys, paint dries darker and cementitious finishes, whether or not it's rock, concrete, sidewalks, dries lighter. Bricks too. Uh, a little wet here, but nothing I can't handle. I'm not gonna do this whole wall, guys. To prove a point, I'm gonna stop just up to this window and come back to it. But I'll show you something, okay, about what a float finishes, or 
I got a bad habit. Me and a lot of other guys in the trade calling it a float finish because we use a float to finish it. It's actually a sand finish. See how that's kind of dripping? That wall's too wet, but I'd rather have a wall too wet than too dry because the first trowel full, it just absorbs right and you can't do nothing with it. So in order to finish what, explaining what I started, I'm trial, finish troweling this stuff. Okay. I saved this and I thought, hey, that's a good example right there to answer those questions that I receive regularly. By the way, guys, according to Google Analytics, since I'm killing time and stuck on at the same time, I've had like 40,000 comments since we started on YouTube. Now, of those comments, I've had, I'd say about half the people say, hey, Kirk, how do you do this? Do you suggest this? Do you suggest that? And the other half just say, good job. I learned something. There's always the 1% that says, dude, you suck, which my comment is, that's just jealousy. Knock it off. Anyway, this wall, you notice it's not drying and it's not going to dry until tomorrow because I've wet, I've wet it well. What I'll do is I'll take it to this window and then I'll show you on a dry wall how we texture it. But I'm going to show you how we bring the sand out also on this particular wall because I'm not worried about losing this wall. And when I say losing the wall, that would mean, anybody know? That would mean I'd be getting joint and various colorations. And uh, when you start a color finish when it's with stucco, oops, you got to know where to stop and where to start. Otherwise, you have transition lines. And since I'm talking and not paying attention, I just splattered. Oops. Don't worry, guys. If you're doing this, you're going to be splattering, too. You're going to be splattering. It's just name of the game. All right. Now, for example, I'm going to take this just to the top because in a second, I'm going to go around the corner and um, show you on a drywall how to do this texture. But up here, I'm going to float this. All right. Fortunately, this wall is really damp and the material is really wet. <laughs> a little soupy. Uh, that's my brother, Lou. Uh, anyway, a little wet for this, but whether or not it's a little wet, it's a little dry. We managed to put it on. Anybody says, well, it's too soupy, you just add another bag of color coat and that'll stiffen it up a bit. Boom. And since I use a swimming pool trowel, I'll take my handy dandy little midget trowel and get that corner. And I'm also going to get above that window. And how would I get above that window, guys? With this big trowel, first you take it, go upward. Right above it, set it in there, go upward, then come down on it. Ooh, that's a wet wall. I guess I got carried away, guys, as far as showing you how to wet the wall. All right. So, in order to make this not too long and drawn out, I'm going to stop right here and float it. And again, floating just means I'm going to bring out the sand. It's a sand finish. So, we call it a float finish. Many people call it a sand finish. All right, I'm going to set these tools down. And in order to bring the aggregate out, you need a sponge float. This is a sponge float. It's green. They're usually always green, guys. 
Uh, they, they got blue ones and all different rainbow colors, but they're usually always green. So what I'm doing is I only want to dip this in the water once because with color finishes, depending on if they're really dark, and you keep dipping this in the water, it's going to be like pouring Clorox on blue jeans. It's going to streak it. It'll bleach it quickly. So I'm going to put this in the water now. I'm not going in the water anymore because I don't want this color to be variations. Even though they're painting, it really doesn't matter, but I just don't want to do that. And here's, you take the sponge float. Now I tap it inside the bucket on the top like that. Why? Because I want to keep this curved. I want it curved this way and I want it curved this way. We don't want it to bend in. And if you go like this, guys, and slam it, you tweak your float and you can't float your wall because only two sides are hidden. All right, that being said, now with a brand new float, if they weren't painting this whole house, uh, we'd have to be real particular, but since they are, I'll take my brand new float right here and go sideways. And that's it. That ties it into the ceiling. And over here, where I have this joint, I'm going to take this uh, right here because it's clean. Now, again, it really doesn't matter since they're painting. But if you guys are doing this and you have a brand new wall and you've already done it, then that's the way to get a clean joint. Now, what I do is I just float it. And the reason this is called a float finish is because this is a float in my hand and I'm giving it a sand finish. That's that. I'm going to come down the window here, take it here. And what I do is I just bring it into the existing now. Say if I start from the bottom here and I bring it straight up. Blam. That's, uh, that's done. Now I follow my weep screed at the bottom. My weep screed I'm on. That's a piece of metal that's underneath the stucco to make it pretty. We don't want to leave here and leave a bunch of slobbers. What are slobbers? That's a bunch of crap. Somebody did this and those, they didn't clean that vent out. So we're professionals. We don't want to do that. All right. We finish floating to bring out the sand. Aggregate. And when you guys do this, uh, don't buy a half a float. They make them about five inches. Spend a few bucks. Uh, this is about five bucks. They got some that they're too narrow to do any good. You can do them. I mean, I can use them, but this saves a lot of time. All right, so now we are finished bringing the sand to the surface. That's what they did here. And when this dries, it's going to be a lot lighter. So, yeah, I could finish this wall, but it would take me like another 15 minutes. You guys don't want to hear me jabbering for 15 more minutes. So instead, I'm going to take my tools here and show you how that texture is applied now, even with this soupy mud. All right, I'm going to go to the wall that Jay spread. All right, Jay spread this wall, and he already floated it. See the sand finish? That's the sand finish. Now, what I'll do is I'm just going to give it a skip trial finish. Now, granted, you look at what they got. That's a light lace skip trial finish, so that's what I'm going to do. And the wall I just spread, I cannot get this finished right here unless I let it dry for about another 20 minutes because I hosed the, the crap out of that wall. It is wet, saturated, but that's okay because we're going to be here for a, a few more hours and I wanted not to lose the, the wall itself and the finish. The skip trial right now, yeah, some might say, well, Gee, you shouldn't put so much water, you could skip trial it a lot sooner. Depends on how much stuff we got going on, and we got a lot of stuff going on, so we're gonna be here anyhow. So now I'm just, I'm just matching the skip trial finish. And that is called a dual finish. A dual skip trial uh, float, or sand finish. Now I've got that on there, so I knock it down. All right, we knock that down. We knock this down. And then I go against, against the wall here. Uh, well, I'd show you a little bit more, but why? By now you probably got the idea. And besides, the whole house is already done. And you can see that matches exactly with what they have there. 
And guys, if you look at your own work and you say, whoa, that's a hollow spot. That's all you got to do, a hollow spot. Come back, look at it, say, where, where do you need some mud? Okay, a little bit more. But it's got to be before the whole wall dries. If the whole wall dries and you try to do that, then you're going to have a different color texture. So you got time and um, it's all about patience too, guys. And knowing your materials. Anyway, my name is Kirk. Jason's on the camera. He's the one spreading most of this stuff. We thank you folks for watching and as usual, live long and what? Plaster. By the way, folks, my dad and I are now members of Amazon Affiliates, so if you're looking to buy any of the plastering or construction tools you've seen in our videos and you want to support us in the process, you can check the links below our video or you can go to our website and get them there. If you have any other questions that, for tools we don't have linked, email us direct and we'll respond to you then. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching. And from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.